Hey guys, what is up? Today, I'm gonna to do something a little different. I've put together a compilation of six RV maintenance tips that are often hidden, overlooked, or not even thought of. Most of these tips are for all types of RVs, but there are two that are exclusively for motorhome owners. So stick around, we can all learn from all these things. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Number one, let's start off with a common plumbing problem that every RVer will experience at one time or another. And that's a sink drain that won't drain properly. Take a look. All right, well, here we are in the half bath and I wanna show you something here. This is our sink here from the factory. It came with this little plug right here, this little drain plug, and it just drops in there. And if you wanted to fill up the bowl, you would just push it down and the, water, the bowl would fill up with water. Well, I never did that. I would just keep it popped in there just like that. But because it's so narrow there, it still had a hard time draining. So the way I fixed that problem is I just got rid of this and I bought me these screens and I just drop it in there. I put one in here in this sink, one in the master bath sink, and also one in the shower. And we just clean these out about once a month or so. Um, if there's any hair in there, we'll wipe it out and put the screen back in. This allows the water to drain real fast and uh, keeps the hair out of the P-trap. Well, over the past uh, three or four months, I've noticed that this is draining slower and slower and slower. And so I know that the P-trap under the sink is clogged. So I need to pull this P-trap right here. You unscrew this coupling here and this one here and remove this part right here. And we're going to take it out and clean it. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. I know it's going to be really dirty because I've done this before. Even with the screen in there, you get all that soap scum and all that other nice goodness going down in that P-trap. And it's eventually going to build up. And uh, so we're gonna have to clean that. It's not a big deal. Now, some people at, at the house, they just go to Home Depot or Walmart and get some drain cleaner and some chemicals and dump them down in there. And I've never been a big fan of that stuff. Never used it. Uh, it's bad for the environment. And especially in an RV, it gets down there in your tanks and around your dump valves and all that. I don't want no chemicals in there. We're just gonna pull the P-trap, clean it, put it back in there and reinstall. So. I just removed this, and the way you do that is by just unscrewing these counterclockwise, both of these coupling right here. And when you put it back, you tighten them just hand tight. But here's what the P-trap looks like. See all that sludge in there and down in there, but especially right there. That's just build up from soap and who knows what else. So we're going to go in here, we're going to flush this all out, put it back up in there, and it's going to be just like now. Okay, well, we got it all nice and clean. I took it outside and hosed it off with my garden hose out there and took an old toothbrush and just kind of cleaned up around there. And I've also cleaned up underneath here. And you can see this, this uh, coupling has a washer on it and you'll just slide that down and that'll seal against here. And then this one here is beveled and it will seal in here. Now that I got the P-trap uh, hooked up to the plumbing, um, whenever I work on the sink of any kind, water lines, the P-trap or whatever, I want to make sure that it's not leaking before I put all my stuff back up underneath the cabinet. Um, I mean, sometimes things go wrong, right? I mean, the gasket didn't quite seat right and you have to loosen it up and reseat it and tighten it back up again, stuff like that. But the way I test this, is right here. This is where I do use the old factory plug. I just put it in there and plug it up and I'll add a bunch of water in the sink. And that way I'm, when I pull that plug, I'm getting a sudden rush of a lot of water in there. And if there's any leaks in that P-trap, they're gonna show up right there. Number two, this next one is a common problem with motor homeowners and especially gas motor homeowners. Take a look. While I was up here changing the oil and the air filter and everything, I happened to notice that these hood latches, when this hood comes down, 
it comes up against these bumpers right here. You have one on this side and you have one right here on this side. Well, when I was over here, this thing here was really loose. And I'm, I'm like, okay, what's going on? And I looked back up in there and I saw that the factory uh, adhesive that they used was breaking down, okay? This coach is 10 years old. It was breaking down and this was real loose. I went over and checked that one over there and it was just beginning to come a little loose. So I thought, you know what, we're gonna fix this right now. So I took both of these brackets off. I just basically pushed on them and they just came right off the old sealant. Then I took my scraper and my Dremel tool and both on the bracket and the back side of this area here, I ground off all the old sealant. So once I got all of the old material off, I went ahead and wiped both the clamp and this back area of this fiberglass with acetone, etched it really good. And then I used a Gorilla Clear Max Strength sealant put that all underneath the bracket and around, and then I clamped it. And then I went over and did the other one. Let them sit for about 24, 36 hours, and this thing here is now nice and tight. Now once you do that, now you're going to have to adjust the bumpers. So when you bring the hood down, you want that to not have any play. The way you adjust that is right here. You undo this locking nut, and you either screw out or screw in, and you get it to where it just kisses the inside of the hood. Number three, let's talk about bugs. Number three, let's talk about bugs. Smashed bugs on your tow vehicle windshield, your motorhome windshield, or the front leading edge of any kind of trailer, smashed bugs are always a problem. And it's important to get these bugs off before they get baked in with the sun. Smashed bugs are bad for the paint job, and they also on the windshield can really obscure uh, your view while you're driving. They also can get into your radiator and plug up the radiator and cause overheating problems and all that type of stuff. On trailers, that front leading edge, man, they can really get piled up on there too. But there's an easy solution to getting these bugs off with not much effort. You just have to get them early and don't let them bake in. Now, Joni and I have been around a lot of campgrounds, right? And there are some campgrounds that won't let you wash your whole entire RV. I get that, that's fine. But we have never been in any campground that won't let you wash the windshield or the front leading edge of a trailer. They most always will accommodate that. They're not gonna scream about that. I've even cleaned my windshield many times when we have stopped overnight like at a Cracker Barrel. The key to getting smash bugs off easily is to apply a thin coat of Rain-X, spray on Rain-X, or Reject x on the windshield of your tow vehicle or the motorhome or the leading edge of your trailer. Either one of these products will provide a thin barrier and when you try to go get the bugs off, they're gonna come off real easy and just with water. Now, after a day of traveling, wherever we end up, whatever our destination is for that day, I take my bucket, a five gallon bucket, and I'll fill it up about halfway with water. Then I'll take my awesome telescoping pole. I just love this thing, look at this. I mean, you can just put the brush on the end of this and raise it up and clean the windshield. I, I mean, I just love this thing. These things just beat all get out of those stupid, clumsy painter poles that you can get at a box store. But I take my pole, I put on my soft brush. This is the brush that I wash my coach with. Dip it in the water and wash the windshield. Then I'll take my squeegee and put it on the pole and squeegee off the water off the windshield or the front leading edge of the trailer. These things right here, applying Rain-X, or rejects and using these three tools in a bucket, you can clean that windshield or the front of that uh, trailer in no time flat. The key is to get them off early and apply a thin coat, a protective coat of one of these two products. On one of our trips uh, going to Maine, uh, we stopped overnight at a campground for just one evening. And normally what I would do is I would clean the windshield and get everything ready when we pull out in the morning. But that day's drive, I was beat and I forgot. 
So the very next morning, we got up early like we always do. About 20 miles into the drive, I'm driving into the sun, and I could hardly even see through the windshield because of all the dirt and the bugs and all of that. So I found a closed way station. I took that off ramp and pulled over. I got my bucket and some water and washed the windshield to get all the bugs off. Since I had previously applied rain -X on the windshield, the bugs came off fairly easy. Afterwards, I attached my squeegee and squeegeed off all the water and the windshield was nice and clean again. Using my pole and brush and squeegee made this really easy to do without the need for a ladder. I keep these items in the front bay on the curbside of the RV to make it easy and safe to get them when I need them. So since we're talking about bugs, let me bring up another thing that uh, I found. When we first bought our RV years ago, we took it out for the very first time to do a shakedown. And when we got back, the whole radiator was just full of bugs. I mean, you've seen this before, right? And I'm like, okay, we got to fix this problem. I'm going to show you something here. Come here and look at the size of these holes on the grill. This is the factory grill right here, and there's a dime next to it. Look how big those things are. So it was very easy for bugs to get in there and some big bugs, right? So what I decided to do is put an additional screen in here. What I did is I went dumpster diving again and got me a big piece of cardboard and I made a template for this grill. I came out, you know, a couple inches on either side, all the way around here and down here. I went to Home Depot and bought some quarter inch square uh, chicken wire. And I cut that chicken wire into that pattern of the grill. And then I put the chicken wire on the inside of the grill. And then you can see here I fastened it with little tiny white zip ties. Right here, right here, right here. There's about 30 of them, okay? And I change these out about every couple of years because, you know, over time they're going to get weathered and they'll break and so forth. So that's something that I just do. I just clip those off and put new ties. But standing in front of the motorhome, you can't even tell that that extra wire gap is there. But if you look closely, you can see how it really blocks the bugs from getting in. Doing this little upgrade right here, putting this additional mesh, uh, eliminates 95% of all the bugs that gets in there. It doesn't get rid of every single one, but whenever we arrive and we've been driving through a bunch of bugs, all I gotta do is just wash and brush off the grill. I don't have my radiator all loaded up with them. And for any of you who think that this might block any airflow, it doesn't. Uh, some people I've seen use a fiberglass uh, mesh, like a screening mesh, I don't like that. Uh, it's too flimsy, it's too tight, and it was more difficult to fasten to the factory grill. So that didn't fit my plan, but this uh, quarter inch chicken wire did the trick. Doing this little upgrade right here, putting this additional mesh, uh, eliminates 95% of all the bugs that gets in there. As you saw in that clip, I paid a price for not cleaning my windshield the night before, uh, before we left that following morning. I always do that. But I didn't this time. I got about 20 minutes down the road. I couldn't go any further. I just could not see out that windshield. There was no way I could continue unless I stopped and cleaned it. This is another reason why it's important to carry uh, some water in your fresh water tank. You never know when you're going to need water. So when traveling, my advice is whenever you arrive somewhere, clean it off that evening or early in the morning. I prefer in the evening. Apply rain -X or Reject once every couple of months, just a thin coat. Once applied, either one of those products is fantastic also even when you're driving in the rain. There's been many times where we have been driving, I get caught in a rainstorm or whatever, which I hate. But if I do, if I've got rain -X or Reject on that windshield, I, many times I don't even have to turn on the windshield wipers. That water will just bead right off the edge of the windshield. So that's how I deal with getting bugs off really easy. Number four, replacing step covers. Before I get into the step covers, I'd like us to take a moment to thank every one of you, all my fans who use my Amazon store for everything they need, whether it's RV related or not. The link to my Amazon store is down, down 
there. In the description text. Bookmarking and using my Amazon store for everything you need is a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to making these videos and helping the RV community. I just can't tell you, again, I really try to remind you every video how much Joni and I really appreciate how loyal you are to helping us by shopping for everything you need in our Amazon store. So thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let's get back to it. Number four, replacing step covers, okay? Having step covers, in my opinion, is a very important thing to have. Now, it not only provides you a way to wipe off your feet before you walk into the RV, but they provide a lot of safety features. Now, if you have pets or you have friends that have pets, you've probably seen these little guys, they come scampering and running up those steps, right? And they can slip and fall on metal steps and hurt their little legs. And it's, it's really unsafe and it's even worse when it gets wet or cold and the steps may even get frozen. People and pets can and do slip on metal steps that don't have covers. I've had many of you, several of you, uh, give me reports and stories where you had a guest come over. They're not used to going up and down here. They don't know all that, you know, how to hold onto the handle or whatever. They don't know the danger of it. And they walked up those steps, slipped and uh, slipped and fell. And, you know, it gets ugly. These kind of accidents that happen with pets and people happens more than you would think. Now this can all be avoided if you install a heavy duty step cover. I covered all this when I went into my Quickie Power Steps video, did a comprehensive video of everything you need to know about Quickie Power Steps. But our step covers are five years old now and they were starting to wear a hole here on this front leading edge of this front, this top step. I told Joni, we're gonna replace these steps. They're due. These step covers here are the best product out there, bar none. So take a look on how I replaced our step covers. So I bought a new set. They come three to a, a pack, which is perfect for all three of my steps. And one thing that I was really happy about when I turned this package over is it has these really thick zip ties to attach them to. When you saw me do this install video about five years ago, I used my heavy duty zip ties that I carry with me because the ones that came with this first pack were smaller, thinner zip ties. So I'm really happy to see that they went to a more heavy duty zip tie. One thing I wanted to show you here is I've heard other people say, I don't like step covers because they make my steps rusty. These step covers have been on here for five years. Do you see any rust? No, there's no rust. Why isn't there any rust here? Well, because these step covers have a rubber backing. So year after year, as these steps get wet, or I power wash them, it rains, it doesn't matter, it doesn't transfer to rust on these steps. That's why I like buying the heavy duty step covers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe these down and then I'm gonna put on the new covers. You can see these steps. These are 10 years, almost 11 years old. Not one bit of rust. To install these, it couldn't be any easier. You just put them up here and you wrap them around and you cinch them up together with these zip ties in these grommets. Okay, so here's the step covers all installed. This is the top one. And you can see that I put the zip ties, I moved them to the front. They're just easier to install that way. Same thing with here on the middle uh, step. But on the bottom step, Joni reminded me to make sure that the these zip tie knots are towards the back of the step. And the reason you wanna do that is, is that when you support the steps, like I showed you in previous videos, whether you use just a step or the step and a block or what have you, those zip tie knots are way back here and they won't interfere with you supporting the steps like you should be. So there's all three new step covers. 
I love it. It's just like in your house, right? I mean, how long do carpets last in your house? For us, if you have an outside carpet in the last five years, hey, it, <laughs> it paid for itself. These were five years old, and this was worth it. Look at the difference. These are five years old. These are the new ones. Much better. Number five, I refurbished my gas filler port. Now, this is another motorhome item, and you know how I like to keep everything running top-notch in the RV, right? But I also like to keep it looking as best as I can, too. Well, after tens of thousands of miles of fueling up and uh, the gas filler port where you actually put in the gas pump nozzle, well, that whole area there was looking pretty shabby. So I decided to give it a little attention. Take a look. So since my gas filler port was really looking crappy, I decided I wanted to repaint it. I first carefully taped off the outside edge with painter's tape just outside the old sealant. Then taped and papered everything around the entire fill tube area. Gave it three coats of Rust-Oleum gloss black paint and let it dry overnight. Then removed all the paper and taped one more time on the inside to give me a nice clean line to dig out the old sealant and apply new clear Proflex sealant. Here it is completed. Number six, TPMS gasket lube. All of you guys, all my fans, you know the number one thing that I pay attention to and are careful with is what? Come on, let me see a show of hands. That's right, my tires. And part of taking care of my tires is having an accurate, reliable TPMS, a tire pressure monitoring system. But this maintenance tip is one of those hidden, uh, possibly a thing you've never even thought of concerning your TPMS. Any RVer that is traveling and is not monitoring all your tires all the time, in my opinion, it's just an accident waiting to happen. I've done several videos on this subject, but this tip I'm gonna show you with the TPMS is one of those hidden things that I'll bet you most of you have never even thought of. Take a look. So what I'm gonna do here with my TPMS sensors on the RV and the tow vehicle, is I take this wrench and I'm going to undo the back of it like this here. And then I'm going to hold it on the end here. And I'm going to take a Q-tip with my silicone paste here, also known as plumber's grease, because there's an O-ring, a rubber O-ring right around here that keeps water out of the sensor. So I'm going to gently wipe around this o-ring and this will keep it nice and conditioned and moist and soft and keep it from uh, drying out and cracking you don't need a lot on here that's why i'm using a q-tip and then i take the cap i turn this back around and i put it back on here i take my tool and i tighten and tighten and I just bring it snug. Take a napkin and wipe off any excess that squeezed out from there and reinstall it on the uh, valve stem on the tire. If you wanna learn how to take care of your RV, I show you how to do these things. You'll save a boatload of money, you'll have the confidence that you can do it, and it'll be done right. Just click my logo right under this video. That will take you to my homepage. On my home page, you'll see the playlist tab. Click that and every video I've ever done will be right there on that page in different categories. Or as another option, you see that magnifying glass right up in the upper right hand corner? Click inside there and type what you're looking for. If I've done a video on that subject, it will list it. Well, that's it for now guys. So until next time, this is RV Street, stick around.